Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Hi there, what's up? My name's Timmy Joe. Make videos for you about videos, about computers, about videos on the internet. What's up? Sabertooth, my favorite. We got a little thing going on here. What's up? This is my first video I'm filming in the new set. How's it look? I hope it looks good. I hope the lighting's half decent. I know that there aren't as many lights as normal, but there's some fluorescent ones above. I'll have to work it out. You'll have to bear with me. I don't know when this video is going to air, but I need to update my test bench and uh, I need to. Uh, get some stuff rolling. I need to test this 7970 and see uh, how it's performing. That's a new card I got recently for uh, you know some PC building business stuff. Got my 1080 Ti. It may or may not have had a little drop on the ground uh, during the move. I want to test that, make sure it still works. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to probably cry. It wasn't that big a deal. I'm sure it's fine. And then the PS7 is a Star Saber Tooth motherboard Z77. This was like a freak big deal back in the day. These uh, tough series motherboards, the Sabertooth, they had ridiculous VRMs, five year tough series warranty, and then they went and turned the tough branding over to some ridiculously chintzy mid range stuff with plastic all over it. It used to be high end with plastic on it, as you can clearly see. Uh, this is one of the later gen Sabertooths, and they all started getting these crazy plastic things. There's even like little plastic covers that you stick in the PCIe slots. But uh, it has active VRM cooling. There's a little fan in here. See, I got a camera up here too. Woo! We got a fan right there. And I'm going to put my old AIO on it for my test bench because I'm going to be updating that today. And that's the focus of today's video because the I want to test this. It's a 3570K. I want to see how it does in 2018 versus some modern titles with a 1080 Ti. And uh, it's got 18 or six, what, geez, 32 gigs of HyperX memory in it. And it's a really nice uh, board I got from a friend in trade for some Ryzen stuff. And then we're updating the test bench because I've been using this AIO for a while. I kind of see that the performance is degradating on it a bit. It's an Arctic, uh, you know, Ace Attack uh, 240, nothing special. Uh, it's got a push pull on it. It's, it's been a pretty good little workhorse AIO for m my purposes, but Deep Cool has sent me even cooler, a cooler, cooler. Woo! Gamer Storm. It's their 280 Castle Series RGB. And oh my goodness, it's, it's ridiculous. Look at this. Look at that. It's bigger than my hand. Like, to compare that versus that, it's... Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to like this. But it's got this crazy mirror finish on it. And it's got a real big rad on it. And we're going to see if I can get that to fit in my on my uh, test bench. You know, make her all happen. Should be lots of fun. I want to test this and see if any there is uh you know much to improvement but we have a 3570k that's going to be you know a price processor you need to keep cool to get max overclocks on it i want to see if i can hit five gigahertz without delitting it we'll see and this really awesome motherboard and uh yeah let's go ahead and get started because you, you know what you've been starving for content for a while i'm going to put this on here do a little montage that way i can test out some gpus and uh we can do a test on this uh long-term you know gaming test see how it compares to like Ryzen 2700X, does it still get better FPS in games? I bet it does, but uh, we're, we'll, we'll do some testing. We'll see if maybe we can get 3570K up to five gigahertz. So queue up a fasty switcheroo thingy, Timmy Joe, and thanks for coming to my new studio. It's a lot of fun. I got all my, you know, all my stuff in a new room, in a new shop, in a new awesomeness, and a computer store that I'm starting on the other side of this wall. It's, it's tons of fun. Ah!
right. Um, extremely ridiculous results we're having here. Um, I overclocked this 3570. I was under the under impression that, uh, you know, the Ivy Bridge and the Sandy Bridge chips, they did not like going, uh, you know, above like 4.8 gigahertz uh, as a kind of a general rule of thumb. And I was able to boot at 5 with this AIO. And it's doing really well at 4.9. It did not survive at 5 without maybe pushing the voltages a little higher than I'd want to, 1.4. Four two, uh, but it's it's stable and it hasn't throttled at 4.9 gigahertz and it's been running for 20 minutes with the FPU stress test. So that this cooler is pretty dang good for for at least for Intel chips. I mean, I thought I saw some degradation on Ryzen to where uh, a couple other AIOs were doing much better. But maybe I just didn't have a good mount or something like that, because it's not bad. So another thing that's really helping is I don't think we get anywhere near this the, these frequencies on any other motherboard. This motherboard is a freaking boss, man. So we're going to go ahead and switch the AIOs over and, and see if we can do better than 4.9 gigahertz at, uh, well, it was getting to like 100 degrees there, uh, you know, for a second. Uh, let's see here. Package temperature 101 at one point. But uh, we don't see that there has been any throttling. But 3570K, I'm super impressed with this thing so far. It's a boss. And it, you know what? It wouldn't do any better with any other motherboard. This thing, I can feel the little fan pushing the air out of the vents through the VRM and actually cooling things down. So it's doing its job. And I don't have to have my crazy fan on it either. So lots of fun. So I'll see you guys in a minute. We'll switch things over. Cha -cha! I shouldn't do that with my nice equipment. Um, we have a verdict. Have this all installed. Fairly easy to install if you've ever installed an AAO before. It's sort of complicated. It's sort of not. It all depends on your level of expertise. But I used all the mounting hardware that came with this. I, I got her all set up. She's a little bit big for my bench. But we're going to be changing that in a second anyways. Because it's thermal throttling. A little bit. It's actually reaching temperatures of up to 105 degrees on the package. When... Uh, this thing was only hitting 101 after a 20 minute stress test and we're only 10 minutes in on the FPU stress test, the exact same test at 4.9 gigahertz on the Core i5 3570K. So, um, uh, conclusion, I thought maybe the something wasn't as good. Now, you would think these were both Asetechs because Asetech has the patent for pump on the block. I think that this one's using some stuff it's not supposed to and that's why Deepcool let me know that this particular AIO is not being sold in the United States, I believe. It will be sold in Canada and in European markets and stuff, but this one you're limiting yourself. Now it's beautiful, it has a really cool mirror finish to it, but when it's on, you see through the mirror and it's got lighting effects that match the fan. It, it's really, really awesome, but uh, the performance is nigh as good as this one. Now uh, we're gonna test some other stuff in a second because I don't think that this is fair. Although this has a bigger rat on it, it's uh, this has a one or uh, sorry a two one uh, twenties, right? This has a two eighty on it. Well, the rat is thicker on this one. It's actually quite a bit thicker, so much so that I believe there's about the same amount of fluid in each of them, and the surface area is about the same. So these are kind of in the same category, even though this one's got smaller fans on it, but it's got four of them. So it wouldn't be fair to test, you know, we get to test apples to apples or whatever, apples to bananas and oranges. We're going to have to put four fans on this in a push-pull, which is going to be complicated, but I'm going to do it anyways. But yeah, it's hitting 105 on the package, but four degrees worse 
and I made sure that I reset the, the, the block. I'm using the hardware that came with it. Uh, I just think it's that the extra two fans do a lot of good in just keeping that initial temperature down. Because I was hoping to get a part higher overclock with this. And we're, at, we're stuck at 4.9 and almost 700 in Cinebench. And I was hoping to hit that 700. So I'll be back. Well, it looks like adding the fans solved the issue. We're over here and it's only reached whoop, 102, which it's, it's hot in here. As you can see, I do have an air conditioner running, but it's uh, been getting hotter and hotter progressively. And as I turn off the air conditioner to talk to the camera, you know, probably something to do with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can overclock it a little further, maybe lower the voltage a bit. Yeah, talk to you soon. All right, so in conclusion, we have some cool stuff going on. The uh, Deep Cool Castle 280 RGB. It also comes in uh, 240, and uh, you know it's just got a giant mirrored finish, crazy RGB thing on the top. I mean, look at that. That looks awesome. And uh, just to give you some highlights before I show you the awesomest overclock ever, uh, there is a controller that comes with this. It's located right here. You can secure this in your case somewhere. You can change the lighting effects very easily by clicking and cycling through them. There is a whole whack of stuff, every color in the rainbow. It does some swirlies. It does some mix of colors. See, there we go. Orange and pink, blue and pink, green and pink. Some cool stuff. It's easy to mount. It mounts pretty much like every other AIO. Uh, it does have kind of a weird pump configuration compared to what you're used to with Asetek. The cold plate is definitely different than what they use. Uh, it's, a, it's a little squared off actually underneath the round bit. And then it comes with some really nice RGB fans. It, uh, it's a really nice piece of kit. And I was kind of skeptical at first. I thought maybe the performance on it wasn't that great, but I forgot that uh, the temperature has risen in here and that probably accounted for at least uh, you know, two or three degrees on that initial run with the, just the two fans. So now that we've added the two fans, it's performing as good as this guy did, if not better, because I have the thing cranked at five gigahertz right now, five gigahertz. And we're getting a 677 in Cinebench. Now I wanted to hit 700, right? I wanted to, I wanted to run Cinebench at, uh, you know, we see here, I, I ran Cinebench, we'll just check the temperatures. It hits about 80 degrees. Uh, in a Cinebench run. So it's doing a really good job of you know, cooling five gigahertz on a CPU that's like six years old. It's really surprised. I haven't deleted it or anything. We're gonna go up here. We're gonna go set priority to a real time change priority. Now we can close this out and we'll give it our two seconds. We're hoping to hit that 700 mark, aren't we? So yeah, deep cool you, gamer storm. You guys make awesome stuff. I got a case to review with a different AIO in it, but a, a 280 to, you know, to make it happen. Now let's just cross our fingers that this doesn't crash out, but it's running at five gigahertz real time and it's a quad core, so it's, you know, whatever, but a 3570K running at five gigahertz in 2018. I can't wait to do the gaming benchmarks on this at a reasonable, uh, we, we saw it, it does uh, 4.9, you know, without a crazy fan profile, so it's, a viable solution uh, you know it looks like you don't need to upgrade if you have this level of CPU as long as you maybe upgrade your cooling if you don't have adequate cooling for it but uh, I have the really good motherboard for this so keep that in mind this might be one of the best motherboards you could buy for the Z77 platform the uh, Sabertooth Z77 it's got a ridiculous VRM it's got active VRM cooling I even have another fan on it boom 705 bitch get out oh sorry sorry fan sorry box i i got 700 in cinebench on a quad core from six years ago that's that's some pretty awesome performance and there's no way it would have happened without a good cooler you know this this probably would have done the job but i think that adding the second set of fans on that really blew this thing out of the water and it's it's my new favorite aio i'm out watch jimmy joe instagram and twitter thanks for coming with me on a, this is a fun first video back uh, in the new studio here, and you know that there's all kinds of fun overclocking to come, as well as product reviews, and old video card retrospectives, and old performance of the thing, and we're definitely doing uh, 3570, maybe I'll get myself a 3772, 
and uh, we'll do a Z77 overclocking bonanza. But uh, I would say if you have KB Lake, uh, or, or if you want to upgrade to KB Lake, you know, that there's no sense in doing this. Now, obviously, things have changed once Coffee Lake came along and more cores were added to this platform. But the IPC on this is very, very good. Uh, 7700K would be getting about uh, 1050, 1100 on its best day in Cinebench, so about 400 points less than this. And this, you know, is the same amount of cores, less hyper threading. So, you know, the, the threads are halved and it's still getting 700. That is awesome. So, we'll see you in the review for this video. We'll see you later on. I'm Timmy Joe. Go donate to my Patreon or buy some things through my Amazon or something. Because I gotta pay for this new deeds! Ah!